Hello and welcome Hola. to another monthly update video for Victoria 3. My name is Maciej, I'm a part of the community team for Victoria, and today we'll talk about countries in a state of internal turmoil. First off, Como España. If you've been following along the uh, dev diaries for Victoria. Sí, soy suscriptor de Traxium. He estado siguiendo los diarios de desarrollo de Victoria 3. Pero continúo viendo el vídeo. So far, you will know that a big part of the game is balancing the economic and political needs of different factions in your country. Revolutions are what happens when you fail. Chicos, se queda mucho para que salga el diario de desarrollo, o sea, para que salga el DLC de LU4, faltan probablemente igual tres meses. En plan, obviamente, puede que no estén terminados Suecia, Noruega, etc. Pero esos van a tener misiones y cosas seguro, 100%. One idea at the forefront of our mind when designing those system for revolutions was that we wanted revolutions to be very impactful, very threatening to the player, but also rare. To accomplish this, we've given you a lot of tools to manage the build up to a revolution and uh, essentially decide how much you want to give in to the revolutionary uh, movement and how much you want to oppose them and perhaps have to fight them militarily. The first step of a revolution is always a political movement to enact, preserve or restore a certain law. Movements have two parameters that Apoyar determine el, el trabajo how, infantil, how powerful no? and dangerous they are. Support comes from the sheer number of pops and the political strength of the interest groups that support the movement. Radicalism comes from the number of radical pops that support the movement and the number of angry interest groups that support it. The precise combination of these two parameters determine how the political movement will act and how high up on the priority list it is will be for you to deal with it. A high support but low radicalism movement is not as likely to start an armed uprising against you and you might be able to uh, deal with it for a longer period of time, maybe even use it for your own ends. Uh, whereas a high radicalism movement with low support might not be so dangerous, sí, but you will have to fight them. How you deal with a revolutionary movement is going to be highly impacted by those parameters as well. A high radicalism movement will very rapidly start militarily opposing you and you will have to deal with... A ver, siendo honestos, chicos, mientras no estén las fuerzas armadas de, del lado de los rebeldes, estás chilling, tío. Estás chilling que flipas. ...with them faster, perhaps by ceasing to enact the law that they don't like. A movement with strong support but low radicalism at the moment, uh, you might be able to deal with by, for example, just improving their material conditions. In your efforts to deal with political movements, you might want to issue decrees, for example, to violently suppress the revolutionaries in specific states or provide emergency relief in others. You might also want to enact a home affairs institution consisting of, for example, a secret police or a national guard that help you manage these political movements better. The laws of the revolutionary. De todos modos, tío, eh, el hecho de, de los edictos está guay, ¿no? Porque usas la autoridad y como que puedes reaccionar rápido a algo, pero tiene pinta de que a largo plazo va a ser una mierda eso, ¿eh? En plan, de que como te la quieras liar mucho, un movimiento te la va a acabar liando. En plan, que es como eso? Soluciones a corto plazo, ¿sabéis? No tiene las fuerzas armadas, o que pero tiene las suyas. Every country depend on the movement that spawned them, with politicians, generals, and admirals potentially joining the revolution. Revolutionary wars ropa, begin with diplomatic play. Other nations can join in this play either in support of the revolution. Y esto no me pes, tío. Esto no me va a ser una troleada. Es que no somos conscientes de esto, eh. Es que no somos conscientes de la troleada que va a ser esto no me pes. Cuando se monta una revolución en tu país, se pueden meter países extranjeros a dar por culo. Eso no me pesa, va a ser una locura, tío. Va a ser una troleada que flipas. There is no white piece. Hay que There estar guapo, eh. Players are able to choose their side in the revolution. But be aware that you have to win this revolution because defeat means game over. While revolutions do in some sense represent a failure of your country, they can also provide an opportunity to accelerate your goals mm. with violent means. Revolutions were certainly a big thing in the age of industry. But there are more ways in which people could take matters in their own hands. Let's talk about cultural secessions. While revolutions are a reaction to legal and political changes in your country, <laughs> the secessions are what happens when cultural groups in your society 
are unhappy and feel something has to change. One of the main mechanics in secessions are turmoil. Turmoil is a measure of the social friction and conflicts in your society. One of the main causes for turmoil in your country might... Sí, totalmente lo que dice Sibo, ¿no? Eh, te metes con el bando que vaya a ganar. A ver, la puta es eso, que puedes cambiar rápidamente el... el eh, cómo funciona tu país. Yo voy a mentir con el lado vencedor. Pero es que hay que tener en cuenta que perder una revolución se termina la partida. En plan a la puta, ¿sabes? Proyecto nacionalismo húngaro, ¿eh? Be discrimination against certain cultural groups. At the start of the game, most countries will start with laws to discriminate against different cultures. Discrimination plays a big role in the power balance in your country. Discriminated pops are paid less and have far less political power. No me apetece nada jugar con Inglaterra en este juego. En plan, jugar con países que que tienen con muchísimo territorio en general en los juegos de Paradox me, no me gusta nada, salvo que ese territorio lo haya conquistado yo. Y en plan, porque lo tengo así todo controlado más o menos, pero empezar con mucho territorio, en plan, rollo jugar con la URSS o con Gran Bretaña en, en Hoy 4, pff, o aquí no, en plan, jugar con el Reino Unido aquí que tiene toda la India, y va a tener sus problemas culturales y tal, o, o China o algo así, uf, me, o Países Bajos, ¿no? Países Bajos es otro bueno, buen ejemplo. These dominant factions might have something to say and will try to oppose you. Ultimately, this might even lead to a revolution. Yeah. Discrimination can be measured in different ways in the game. It can be measured within a state, within a culture, or within a culture in a country. If cultures start to feel too discriminated against, the pops in those cultures might choose to move to other places. Ojo, los Askenazis se van a Buenos Aires. State that they consider to be a home Ahora migraciones alemanas. Ahora migraciones alemanas a Argentina, chicos. ¿Qué creéis? ¿Se podrá dar? Te va a ser muy gracioso jugar con Argentina, convertirlo en un vergel y que vengan los europeos a Argentina, tío. And seek independence. When a secession movement starts, you as a player have several options. One option might be that you simply accept their demands and release the country. Here. You might choose to play as the country or to release the country as a subject so you can still meddle in their affairs. Otherwise, if you choose to ignore their demands, there will be... Está bien, tío, que les puedas decir directamente que se libren con guasallos, que no sea en plan todo o nada de sin independencia ni a tomar por el culo. War. It's important to note that a secessionist movement starting in your country might be the spark needed for similar movements to start in... Y eso mola mucho el Victoria 3, ¿eh? Esto mola muchísimo, tío. Esto mola muchísimo. Yeah. Ultimately, if you want to keep your country together, you need to carefully manage the secession movements that might arise. Qué ganazas, chavales, de jugar con Polonia, ¿eh? Now, we can't really talk about revolutions and secessions without mentioning one of the biggest conflicts of the era. That's right. We're going to talk about the American Civil War. Vale, la, los traductores han sido más detallistas que yo, que yo puse Guerra Civil Esta eh, Americana, que en general se conoce así, ¿vale? En España. O sea, no es que odiemos a, a los americanos ni que sea una falta de respeto y tal. Entiendo que lo correcto es decir Guerra Civil Estadounidense, pero a mí hace aquí pone eh, American Civil War y los subtítulos han dicho Guerra Civil Estadounidense. Yo voy a intentar tener cuidado y decirlo así también, ¿vale? Pero si me sale alguna vez, no es que os odie, ¿vale? Slavery is the heart of the American Civil War. The United States begins with a journal entry detailing the slavery debate. As the situation escalates, political movements to preserve or abolish the institution of slavery will begin to emerge. Attempting to abolish slavery through the law system may result in a large reactionary movement which will escalate into a civil war. The territory held by each side is not arbitrarily scripted. It is determined by where the interest groups on each side have their power bases. This makes the civil war very dynamic. States with powerful plantation owners are very likely to secede. However, that does not mean that we're necessarily going to get a scenario which is identical to history. The winner takes it all. While the Confederacy will attempt to secede and establish an independent state, the Union will try to hold itself together at all costs. In the event of a Union victory, a long process of reconstruction will begin. You will be charged with healing the scars of the civil war, which will not be an easy task by any means. You'll be presented with multiple goals, some of which are competing against each other. 
Your attempts to reunify the country will be affected by different groups that will support or oppose racial equality. The paths you take throughout the reconstruction will have a lasting effect on your nation. This is a battle for America's cultural soul. We talked a lot about uprisings and war, but how does it look in a more practical sense? Let's delve into battles. Battles between two countries can take place at land or at sea and involves battalions or flotillas from different sides. For a land battle to break out, there must be at least one general that is trying to advance. Me tengo que ir un momento que tal va. Está guay, tío. Estamos viendo ahora. No quiero ver esto, chicos. No quiero ver esto, chicos. A naval battle can occur when one admiral intercepts another. Admirals at sea will engage each other with the sum total of the flotillas on either side. On the other hand, on land, the setup is a little more complex. First, the attacking and defending generals must be paired. ¿Por qué son todo imágenes de España comiendo rabo, tío? ¿Por qué, tío? Son todo imágenes de España comiendo... Mira aquí, 83 regimientos españoles contra los 151 franceses, tío. ¿Qué es esto? Among the possibly several generals that could be on the same front. A province on the defender's side of the front is selected as the site of the battle. And the terrain of that province will influence its outcome. <laughs> on land, not all... Buen siglo, eh, para ser español, chavales. ...of the two generals fighting... Uh, will necessarily be involved in every battle. Tío, qué guapo los cascos, ¿no? Mira. Qué chulo, tío. Los modelos molan mucho, ¿eh? han mejorado un montón, tío. Fighting, uh, will necessarily be involved in Lo de Tizona esta mañana está muy chulo, ¿eh? Every battle. And in fact, some generals might even get reinforcements from other generals on the same front. All of these setup steps are scriptable and tweakable by mods. As a battle ya, commences, muy prusiano, a battle sí. condition is selected for each side, which will influence that side going forward until the end of the battle. The condition that you end up with is dependent on your commander's skills. At this point, the battle commences and proceeds in rounds until one side has had enough and retreats. Each round, sides will simultaneously try to maximize the number of casualties they inflict on the other side. They do so by using their offense or defense scores. Which are determined este de desarrollo tampoco contó mucha cosa nueva, ¿eh? Y una pregunta que os lanzo, ¿os mola que cuando se va conquistando territorio se vea como con la bandera del país que está conquistando en vez de con las clásicas barras de Paradox? A mí se me hace raro, tío. O sea, no estoy muy... pero supongo que igual les queda guay, tío, pero... Están tan acostumbrados a las barras... Defender. Not all of the casualties taken during an exchange are fatal. Some will simply leave the battle and come back after. Some will become dependents in your home country, uh, and some will be killed. Units will also take damage to their morale, depending on how many casualties uh, they had inflicted upon them compared to how much they inflicted on the enemy. Demoralized units become useless in battle, and when a side has sufficient number of demoralized units, they will retreat. After the battle, morale will recover, but only up to the general's supply level. Okay. The side that didn't retreat wins the battle and possibly a number of provinces. If the advancer wins, they will capture some of the provinces on the enemy's side. Whereas if the defender wins, they may regain some lost territory. Ultimately, battles are where you see the effects of all those choices you made in constructing your military machine and where the metal of two armies are put to the test. And so, we have reached the end of Quiero confiar que en esos momentos en los que los españoles parece que están en una clara inferioridad eh, es porque en el fondo tenemos una tecnología muy superior a los franceses y seguro que les ganamos copium. Eh, no sé, pinta chulo, tío. Chicos, estoy en un mood con el Victoria 3. Lo comentaré el jueves, ¿vale? Con el diario de desarrollo. Pero estoy literalmente en un mood que me la suda que salga. O sea, me la suda que salga el juego. En plan de. Quiero que el juego sea muy bueno, tío. Y quiero. O sea, literalmente, se tienen que pegar un año más haciéndolo. 
me parece bien, ¿sabes? En plan, no tengo ninguna prisa por jugarlo. Eh, vi un montón de contenido de Stellaris, de CK3, de U4, de Hoy 4 en algún momento, en plan... Que se tomen todo el tiempo que necesiten para hacer el Victor 3. En plan, tiene, este juego tiene que ser un melocotonazo de lanzamiento, tío. 